Many of us SOLIDWORKS users would be considered gearheads or high-tech enthusiasts, but some of us take our gearheadiness to such a high level that our enthusiasm for all things mechanical just pours from our heart. This tutorial is for you, the SOLIDWORKS user that says, Nay, I am not just a gearhead, I am a gear heart. In this four-part series, we'll be building a functional geared heart pendant using mostly essential SOLIDWORKS features with a few unique part and assembly features sprinkled in. Stay tuned throughout the series to see how this unique reversible design comes together. We're going to design this assembly around some existing gears in a single part file. Let's start by inserting existing parts into this file. We'll go to Insert, Part, and navigate to the 1.25 inch gear we want to design around. The Insert Part Property Manager gives you several import options. You can choose to include as much or as little information about the part as you'd like, including all of the planes, axes, sketches, etc. used to make the original part. In this case, I know I have an unabsorbed sketch of the gear's pitch diameter that I'd like to reference, so I'll choose to import unabsorbed sketches as well. You can choose to locate this part in space using the Move slash Copy Bodies feature, or if you just click on the green check mark, the part will be placed in the design space where it was designed in the original part file. Lastly, note that the insert part function creates an external link between this new part file and the original gear part file. Any changes made to the original file will automatically update in this new part file, but users have the option of breaking the link if they'd like to make heavy design changes to the part separate from the original file. Now let's insert our 0.5 inch gear following the same procedure making sure we choose to import the unabsorbed sketches again. Let's use the move slash copy bodies tool to move this smaller gear into place, which first requires a reference sketch. We're going to move this gear up and to the right on a 45 degree line, making sure the new position places the two pitch diameters tangent to each other. Once in the Move Copy Bodies tool, you can choose to translate the part from one point on your reference sketch to another point on our reference sketch. In this case, we want to ensure the Copy option is not selected. We're ready to start sketching our heart shape around these gears. One option for achieving a shape you're happy with is to use an imported image as a reference for sketching. Let's create a sketch on the front plane and go to Tools, Sketch Tools, and select Sketch Picture to choose an image to design around. I'll start by visually resizing and moving this image into place. And then fine tune the image's size and position in the Sketch Picture Property Manager. You can begin using sketch entities in the same sketch, but I like to leave the sketch picture in its own sketch in case I'd like to hide it later without hiding any sketch entities I've drawn around it. So let's create a new sketch on the same plane and sketch around this heart using the spline tool. Something we see many users are in the habit of doing when using the spline tool, and it's a habit I've had a hard time breaking myself, is going overboard on the number of sketched control points used. Rather than create dozens of control points along the outline of this heart, I've limited the points to four, and I'll change the angle and length of the handles to achieve the desired shape. Keep this in mind when designing parts heavily with splines, as more points equals higher required processing power. Ensure the endpoints of the spline are vertical with the origin of the part, so we can mirror this shape around a center line to wrap up the sketch. Now let's create an extruded boss of the heart, 0.125 inches thick, ensuring the merge result option is deselected so it does not merge to the gears. Let's hide our sketch picture and just soften up these sharp edges with a 20 thousandths of an inch fillet.
Now that we have the base of our enclosure extruded, let's create the sketch for our cover extrusion. In part two of this series, we'll create a patterned border around the heart that will act as an alignment aid for the two halves of the enclosure. To leave a little bit of clearance for assembly, let's use the Offset Entities sketch tool to create a slightly smaller top half. As you can see, this simply creates a dimensioned offset relationship that can easily be tweaked if more or less clearance is needed. Now let's extrude the cover for our enclosure to match the thickness of the base at 0.125 inches. Again, ensure the merge result option is not selected. We now have a part file that consists of four separate parts. We'll wrap up part one of the series by softening up the outer edges of our enclosure with a 0.1 inch fillet. Note that you can only create features like fillets and chamfers on a single body. So we'll need to create the outer fillets using two separate features. Now we have the basic layout of our heart complete. Stay tuned for part two of this series where we will introduce a unique patterning feature and we'll begin to expose the inner workings of this gear heart.